the silo rebels you're watching prep nation tv coverage of the 2024 rattan ram classic here at rattan high school smattering of class b a 2a and now 3a schools with silo making the leap this year up to 3a they will be the home team and it'll be tigers up to bat starting the first six three ground out one down like to thank our coverage sponsor for today's live stream video highlights and plays of the game, Boomworks Fency and Black Oxides. A little bit wider angle view on the camera so it's not so up close. Really bright, sunny day today, so we're going to have very pristine videos. Everybody's going to like that part. However, we do have some bumblebees out today trying to sting everybody. So hopefully that will not be a problem throughout the day. You would think they'd be hibernating just simply based upon the bipolar weather patterns from the past three or four months. It has been all over the map every day, up and down. I don't know that I have been this sick this long consistently in a long, long time. But head cold, bronchitis, upper respiratory infection, really wicked cough. And inside pick on the full count will walk the Tigers. On paper, this should be the best game of the day across the board, just records and overall stature of both teams. However, some of those things are subject to interpretation. Sometimes they change. However, both of the teams enter tournament hot, each of them perennial powerhouses in fall and spring baseball. As I alluded to earlier, Silo being reclassified by OSSAA up to Class 3A. So far, it's been pretty normal, I would say, because their record is 9-2. and two. Only losses coming out of state to both Germantown, Pennsylvania, a surprising 10-0 shutout, and then against Northside Christian from Florida, 5-1. A couple of district games for them already in the books. Satoka, 21-0, 13-1 victory. They've already met Valiant. They'll have another rematch of that game. They've already taken the series sweep against Hugo, 14-11-0. So they enter the tournament on a two-game win streak, 9-2 and two for the Silo Rebels. Checks him in high and tied at first. Tuplo Tigers, Class B powerhouse under Coach Clay Weller. They enter the tournament 4-2. and two. Loss earlier in the season to Rattan, the host team for the tournament, 5-3. And then losing a heartbreaker, really tied affair against Dale, seven to six technically with a rain out against boswell they enter the tournament with only one game one in a row six five over asher and so it is a matchup of nine two versus four two games in the book earlier today rattan defeats allen 10-0 on a fourth inning run rule 
Worcester holds on to defeat Roth victorious 6-3. They were up 6-0 through the top of the third. Gave up a couple of runs in the 6th and 7th. Roth made it interesting, however, ran out of real estate in time. So now we know half of the pairings for tomorrow's noon and 12 o'clock games. As is, it will be at the 12 o'clock toss-out. Roth versus the loser of Wright City Valiant, the final game coming up at approximately 6 p.m. The 2 o'clock game will now have Allen versus the loser of this game. 4-3 on the ground out. Two down, base runner advances to second. Back to back. Full counts for Silos, so that is probably kind of surprising early on here. Tupelo taking them deep into the pitch count. So your winner's bracket games tomorrow. Worcester will slot to the 4 o'clock game. And then Rattan will be in the 6 o'clock game. Saturday's format changes somewhat. Instead of 12, 2, 4, and 6, we just go to 12, 2, and 4 for the 5th, 3rd, and 1st place games. Just a reminder, we will be live streaming and broadcasting all games for the tournament. So in effect, games 2 through 10, we did get here a little bit late for the Rattan game. And since it was a run rule, rather than do just one inning plus, we went ahead and just held off on doing it. And so we will have highlights up for each game. Master tournament reel as well. Hard hit shortstop, fields it, fires over, and it's going to be a 6-3 ground up. Tiger Strand 1, Rebels coming up to bat. You're watching Prep Nation TV. Early on, some initial thoughts for some of the games and teams that we've seen. I think it's going to be a huge boon for Amber Pocasa dropping down from 2A to A. Though they have struggled traditionally in Class A for fall, that's been because of it being a hodgepodge of about 55 teams that otherwise would be 2A, 3A, 4A, for example, being. I think this will help a young Ampo squad really find their footing looking to get back to a potential state championship game. So far, Fort Carp Roxton taking some knocks. However, Calumet kind of facing a similar fate this week. He was talking with head coach Kobe Thiessen and telling me that, you know, they needed to really, really start playing better. And that occasionally will happen throughout the season when you go grades above or classes above. In this case, <laughs> Calumet undefeated uh, up until going to the Edmond Spring Break Festival. And not that they acquitted themselves poorly, they didn't. Um, defeated Oklahoma Christian School 7-5, lost to Moore 6-4, and then defeated Fairview 8-6. They'll be in tournament play this weekend at the I-40 Classic. Some of the games got pushed back from the post that I saw. 
Uh, but boy, they're just not going to get an easy game there. Elk City, Weatherford, Tuttle, and Clinton. Um, just already seen Clinton earlier in the season. So keep an eye on that. Fly out to right field, one down. Two down for the Rebels here early on. 3-1 pitch count, though. Gets the green light on the swing, just about drops himself. So we'll go to a full count. Batting gloves over the years have absolutely changed. These literally resemble something you would grab at Orsalins or Tractor Supply. Hilarious yellow gloves here. So we take a full count money pitch. Gets him in high and tight. That one is going to hook foul. So goes over in the parking lot. Full count will resume two down. Rebels looking to get a runner on here in the bottom of the first. Otherwise, a very quick inning for Tupelo. They were able to stretch silo pitchers in the top of the first and get back-to-back -back full counts and gets the money pitch on the strikeout. Your score through one, Tupelo zero, silo zero. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Britain Ram Classic here at Britain High School. Just a reminder for those that are watching the game, we do keep the content for up to four to five years. So long story short, if you want to watch the games after the fact, you can go to playlists and search A to Z by school. You can look under live stream generally for all the live streams. There are some exceptions to that when we have a tape delay game. Uh, for whatever reason, just don't stream the game live and then we upload it later. By and large, the video tab, though, will have sections for highlights, plays of the game, interviews, things along those lines. 
just give us a subscribe if you don't mind, please, and thank you. One more game coming up tonight. It'll be the Wright City Lumberjacks versus the Valued Bulldogs. That game should start at approximately 6 o'clock. Two one on the pitch count after the low drop. All right, the runner is Vance to first on the walk. Throws down the perfect bunt, going to go to third base. Fielder's choice fires over on the 5-3. Base runner may get greedy here, and they tag him out. Well, aggressiveness is good, but it also comes with the risk. Silo times it perfectly, so they get the double play. Very rare indeed. Ends up being a 5-3-6 for the double play. So nicely done. Tag out is at five, so in effect it's a five three five, even though I think the shortstop roamed over to help him back it up and get the tag. So nicely done by the Rebels. They negate the leadoff walk and put it to Tupelo here early on and get the strikeout. So a huge swing of events. We'll head to the bottom of the second. You're watching PNTV coverage of the 2024 Retain Ram Classic. Thank you. 
And there goes, rips out to center field, dives, misses. It'll be in for the single, and the Rebels have a leadoff runner here in the bottom of the second. Duplo tried to make kind of a swooping diving catch. Unfortunately, just can barely get underneath it. Does well to keep it from rolling backwards behind him. So we'll call that a single without error. Nicely done. Silo hits it into a perfect spot. And Weller keeps him in high and tight, safe back at first again. One more game on tap tonight will be Valiant versus Wright City. And then we'll have our matchup pairings for tomorrow. The 12 and 2 o'clock games will be loser or what I call punch out games. And so we'll have two teams leaving the bracket from the original eight. So far, Rattan victorious 10 0 over Allen to start the day. And then Worcester 6 3 over Roth. We've got a 0 0 score here between Tupelo and Silo, bottom of the second inning. Throws it down. Weller takes it, fields it. Fielder's choice, 1-3. Base runner. It will advance to second, though, for the Rebels. One down. Excuse me. And the next Oh, two pitch. Well, we're keeping the count low here early on. Fouls it off, fights live. Oh, two count will resume. Money pitch on its way, striking out. Beautifully done by Devin Weller there. K time for the Tigers. And here we go. Home safe for the Rebels. They take the early 1-0 lead. Well, we'll have an error assigned there. Goes right over the head of the second baseman all the way out to center field. Allows the Rebels pretty much to jump from first to second in the first place. And then rounding third and heading home. So it ends up being a three-base miscue for Tupelo here. Rebels on top, 1-0. Oh, 
nobody on it. And boxing. Very patient stretch now for Silo, taking advantage of miscues by Tupelo, forcing the pitcher now to go deeper into counts. Pulls back, though, takes strikes, so it'll be a 2-1 pitch count. <laughs> Ian safe back at first. 2 1 count will resume. Two down for the Tigers. The Rebels have been able to score one run after a wild throw all the way out to deep center field. Catcher just missed timing the throw to a potential steal at second. Ends up being costly because he is able to steal second, third, and home. And here we go. Times two. Ricochets off his shoe, or his cleat, rather. And you'll be in safe for the Rebels. Back-to-back -back stolen bases for Silo. Full count will resume. 3-2. And rips it foul. Full count will resume. Strike out. So the Tigers give up one. We'll add at the top of the third inning. Score now. Silo one, Tupelo zero. Tigers coming up to bat in the top of the third. You're watching PNTV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Baseball Classic. And just a bit outside. And when ricocheted right off the back wall earlier, we had a ball hit the dirt, go flying over the dugout. This is a two-story building, and it leveled, cleared the wall fence, back up mesh, all of it. It really ricocheted off in the dirt. There's another shot. Head coach Clay Weller elected into the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame for baseball coaches. A longtime fixture on the sidelines on the court for both Tupelo Tigers boys and girls basketball. 
And then obviously a baseball. Cody Arrington, our young gun pitcher of the year last year, looking to fill the 2024 award in addition to the baseball player of the year still. <coughs> Excuse me, in large part, that's why we're here at the Rattan tournament this week. That's why we'll specifically be at Atoka next week. And that's why we're trying to squeeze in a couple of tournaments still in April into May. That will allow us to be able to see some more 5A and 6A players as well. And a nice hack strike. We will have a list of 10 semifinalists for Pitcher of the Year and Player of the Year. It's open to any classes 6A through Class B. We do, though, have two players already on the list that I don't have a problem sharing with anybody because their stats and numbers back it up, both from the Rattan Rams, Logan Smith, and then Keegan Robertson. Not saying that they've won, not saying that they're the finalists, saying that they are among the 10 semifinalists. We will give every class an opportunity, plus coaches, to send in stats, prepnationtv at gmail.com, or you can send them to 405-492-8825. Gets him with the strikeout. One out. Mm, good pitch. One one. Fouls it off. One two. Now will be the pitch count. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood here in Rattan High School, just outside of Antlers, Oklahoma. First time here at the ballpark, even though I've passed by a couple of times. Gets him on the strikeout, so back-to-back -back K's for the Rebels. Oh, man, nice pitch. Back-to-back -back pitches. Could be an 0-2 count right now, 1-1, so we'll see what the money pitch is here. He's gone after the last two at 1-1, and he's been able to get three consecutive batters now, 1-2 pitch counts. So a nice correction for the Rebels starting pitcher. Got a couple of full counts in the first inning. Settling into a really nice groove and rhythm here in the second. And deep to the wall it goes. Rounding, heading to second. The end for the stand up double for the Tigers. And they've got a base runner on here with two down in the bottom of the second. Meek will have a courtesy runner. And so we'll have base runner on second. Live back coming up to the plate with two down. Double. 
in for the strike. Outside and high, ball two. So four consecutive batters, one-two pitch count for the Rebels. Ooh, that was close. Evens up the count, two apiece. And here's the money pitch. Outside corner, no good, full count. All right, so for the first time in the inning, Tupelo forcing Silo to go full count once again. Okay, time. Your score through three, Silo. Correction through top of the third. Silo one, two below zero. Rebels coming up to bat. I got him out ahead, 0-2. I'd like to once again thank our coverage sponsors for today's live stream, video highlights, and plays of the game. Boomworks Fencing and ENS Blackhawk Signs. Third strike, base on ball attempt, no good. Bob goes down once again. One down after the 2-3 toss out. If you haven't given us a subscribe yet, please do so. All you have to do is go to the home channel and click subscribe. It's free. If you are new to the app and you haven't followed our game coverage before, you've got a ton of content under playlists, live and tab videos. All you have to do is just kind of go over and shuffle. 
we've got to add the highlights and the plays of the game for today. I did do the upload for the one highlight, but we've yet to do the plays of the game for the prior game and then put them in playlists, but those will be done later today. Perfectly falls right down third baseline. Going to be a nice double for the Rebels, and they've got a base runner on now at second. Squares bunt takes strike. Throws down the bunt. Base runner advances, does his job. Oh, he beats out the throw. In safe for the infield von single. The runners on the corners now for the Rebels. It's tough to compete. He got a really good jump at thirds. So there was absolutely no play there. He could not get a throw off, even if he wanted to potentially pick off the tag. And so had to fire to first. Base runner was already about three strides away when he fired the ball. And the Rebels get a absolute break here early with an error committed by Tupelo, and then the perfunctory sack RBI turns into an infield bunt single. So everything rolling the Rebels way early on. Little surprise that he didn't jump and take that, force a throw. You can always kind of half hop down the line just to force a throw and see if it'll go wild and get the base runner in safe. Steps off the mound, no pitch, no toss. 1-0 pitch count will resume again for Weller. Base runner goes, fakes the throw, and that's exactly textbook style. What you need to do and want to do, you cannot afford a wild throw. Roth gave up a couple of runs that way against Worcester, ended up costing them any chance to win the game. Had they not had a couple of errors, the 6-3 loss could have been closer to a 4-3 kind of game. 2-0 pitch count will resume. Down a little bit low, so 3-0 count. Rebels here now on the verge of potential bases loaded bottom third. Two one on the money pitch. Just off the mark for Tigers get a break there on the swing and a miss. He fouls it off. <clears throat> two low balls just off trajectory makes us a two two pitch count. 
Tigers and Rebels battling here. Base runners in scoring position now. Bases loaded as well for the Rebels. And there it goes all the way out center field. It's going to be a sack RBI. Flies, tags, and the Rebels will score a second run. They took a 2-0 lead. Runners remain first and third, so both batters do textbook definition of what they're supposed to do. The bunt goes for a single instead of a sack. Advances the runner second to third. Fly out to center. Takes a base runner off path. Scores a national run. Two down now here, and we will have a brief meeting between head coach Eddie Jeffcoat and, and batters and base runners. Go foul. O2 pitch count will resume. Sun creeping now behind us and behind a set of clouds. It had been a very bright and sunny day here at Rattan High School. Temperature around 65 or so, give or take. Ball is put in play to the third base. We have a fielder's choice, 5-3. Fires over, gets the out. And the Rebels will score one, strand two. We will head to the top of the fourth inning. Your score now, Silo 2, Tupelo 0. You're watching PNTV coverage, the 2024 Rattan Ram Baseball Classic.
All right, third strike base on ball attempt again is no good. So a 2 3 toss out. Bounced in front of the plate. And fouls it off. And they get the out. One hopper in the dirt evens up the pitch count one one. Four games on tap today. Rutan victorious earlier today against Allen 10 0 in a four inning run rule. Worcester holds on to defeat Roth 6 3. They've got a 2 0 lead here in the top of the fourth for Silo over Tupelo. And then one final game on tap tonight Wright City versus Valiant. And we were a pitch behind in the account, so I apologize. 3 1 pitch ended up becoming 4 1. Base runner now on for the Tigers. I thought we had to bring the rubble to come on Monday. And in for a strike.
And a high pop-up foul going to go down left field line. Running out of space, can't chase it down. And gets the strike out. Rebels take care of business. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. The score remains 2 0. Silo coming up to bat. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Baseball Classic. And on point for the strike, evens up the count 1-1. One, one. Cross chop, single out to right field. Going to dive, misses it. That's going to be a problem, folks. He's going to get a triple out of this. Here he comes. Here he goes. And there he arrives at third base for the Silo Rebels. Almost happened with the center fielder when he dove and knocked the ball down. Fortunately for him, it hit his spot and just quit rolling. This one spliced off and went all the way down the first base line. So another miscue by the defense. That's not technically an error, but in some cases, you have to just cut your losses and just keep running and swat that ball down. It would have been a leadoff single. <laughs> And they're calling him out. So, correction, it ends up being a tag out. Says that he missed second rounding. I didn't zoom in on it close, to be honest with you. I was in the process of moving the camera over. Saw him deep stride. Did see that. So, they're saying that he didn't touch. So, officially a 1-6 tag off. One down. Rebels lose the base runner. And third strike base and ball attempt, no good, two down after the toss out. It's 
So very anticlimactic inning for Silo. They think they've got a triple. They're in business, no outs. And then, bam. And now a double, so that would have scored, misses the ball on the pickup, and just about gave him an opportunity to roam and take another, take another strip. And puts into play perfectly executed. Fires over, gets the out though. Infield pop up fly. We're going to change our have a fly out to the pitcher there. Fifth inning underway. So give me a second. We'll pause here to update. All right. So one out in the top of the fifth scoreboard went blank. We had a power off. So they'll be updating that and catching it back up again. Only thing really to kind of just surmise is one run scores the bottom of the second, one in the third. And gets him on the tag out. Nicely done. 4-3 on the ground out. Applies the tag just as his foot was getting ready to drop on base. And in for the single base runner on first for two below. Oh, <laughs> 
And safe at first, 1-1 one, one pitch count will resume. Both pitchers making a concerted effort to keep the base runners on high and tight here today. Rips it up the middle right to the shortstop. Six unassist tag for the Rebels. Tigers will strand one hitting into the ground out. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Rebels coming up to bat. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Ram Baseball Classic here at Rattan High School. Difference in the game, without a doubt, comes down to one error involving center field. And then two doubles by Silo. They have maximized every opportunity they had with the exception of getting tagged off from third base, missing the round around second. Otherwise, Rebels could easily have three or four or more runs on the table. So to a certain extent, they've taken advantage of what Tupelo has given them. And Tupelo has been able to stave off a couple of runs as well which could have made this a little bit more of an uncomfortable hole and deficit to dig out of. As his game is in play for both teams, Tigers will have six more outs to work with. The Rebels will be up to bat bottom of the fifth. I'd like to thank everybody for watching today. All you have to do is just click subscribe if you haven't already done so. We'll have games on tap tomorrow starting at noon. <clears throat> Approximate times will be 12, 2, 4, and 6. Right now, we know that Worcester will play in the 6 o'clock game, a correction, 4 o'clock game. Rattan will play in the 6 o'clock game. Roth slots for the 12 o'clock. And then Allen for the 2 o'clock game. Allen is waiting for the loser of this game in the 2 o'clock bracket. And then, obviously, Rattan waiting for... The winner. Pitch is on its way, fouls it off. Outside corner just off the mark. Gets him up high and tight on the wrist. This one's going to flare out. Second baseman calls off the shortstop. Good call there. And so it is an infield pop-up fly that just goes out into the grass. and just paints the outside corner. And a really hard rip there for the Rebels way over the head. We'll have a 1-2 pitch count coming up. Just trying to cross the plate on an off-speed changeup, can't quite get it down in the dirt, 2-2 two -two on the pitch. Inside and high, ball three, full count. And with the walk, Rebels once again have a base runner on. Oh, 
On the muddy, on the throw is no good, so successful steal for Silo once again. They're having great success stealing second. However, they did have a round around to third. The, the tag out left them off a base. And so, so far, it's been paying high dividends for them. Have a brief pause in action for head coach Eddie Jeffcoat to come over and talk to the batters on deck and on at home plate. Had it perfectly lined up for a throw, just doesn't go back in safe. Base runners first and second once again for the Rebels. Only one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. They're looking to extend a 2-0 lead. Tupelo has been largely stymied by efficient pitching and highly productive base running for Silo. Just been an inordinate number of walks that have given them opportunities. And then several deep shots out to center field, one out to right field. that just rolled and rolled and rolled on a dive that ended up being a toss out. So Silo unable to capitalize on that particular triple. However, they are able to get back to second once again, having good success in each inning thus far. And the outside corner painted. And gets him on the 5-3 ground out. So base runner taken off the path. And Rebels unable to convert. So back-to-back -back innings now for Silo. No scores after scoring in the second and the third. 
We'll head to the top of the sixth inning with the Tigers coming up to bat. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Baseball Classic. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, that tree? I thought you saw about that tree. Very methodic, quick paced game. Couldn't be different in three games thus far. First game, run rule. Issue never in doubt. Rattan expended the lead and pretty much just unloaded their full arsenal on Allen. Only debate was going to be would they be able to get the run rule in the third inning, and they didn't. Ends up being a 10 0 run rule in the fourth as they get the necessary ninth and tenth run and came over and took it from an 8 0 score, which is where they ended the third to make it 10 0. And then it looked like Worcester might be on the verge of their own run rule, up 6 nothing in the third inning, and then just quit scoring. Roth able to chip away and get a run in the sixth, two in the seventh, ends up losing a full seven-inning game, 6-3. This one definitely looks like it's going to be a pitcher's duel throughout, and it's going to probably come down to who makes the, meet the most out of the opportunities. And if there are any more errors, if it will swing Tupelo's way in that, or will continue to be them. They've got two for the day, and both have been costly. Gets a good rip on it, unable to make contact, so the ball goes foul. Weller, the starting pitcher for the Tigers today, and son of head coach Clay Weller. Are you guys talking about someone at the school getting their job taken away from them? Okay, just double checking because people listen to this and I don't want to start a problem. <laughs> Pitching change for the Rebels. If I had been putting some money down on this proposition, I would have thought that Coach Weller might have considered pulling his son, not for the fact that it's a dad issue, but because he would want to save him potentially for game Saturday. Um, so I'm a little surprised that Silo makes the change here. They haven't really been threatened. Um, there's only been really two innings where Tupelo had an opportunity to even get to second base. They've yet to get to third. Nobody's been at home. And so maybe a little strategic move here, maybe just a, a pitch count that they've put them on. I'll do my best to try to find out some particulars on that particular strategy or thought process. But as is, it'll be a full five innings of work for the original starting pitcher for the Rebels, 
And we will have no outs, one base runner on. So the new pitcher in the game for Silo will not inherit the base runner at first. Any potential earned runs will have to come from home plate for the batter coming up. Flies out, potential double play, and they get it. Nicely done by the Rebels. Five unassist, three toss out. Hunging out to dry. I mean, literally hit over a third of the way down the baseline for third base. He was perfectly in the right spot just to snag it. Base runner jumped, thinking it was going to go over the glove. He was halfway down through first baseline to second. And before he could even really get on the Jets to go back, the ball was already on its way. Easy out for Silo, two down. Chops it. That one's going to go foul. 1-1 one, one pitch count will resume. So a little wild pitching going on now. Otherwise, it's been a pretty good change. For head coach Jeff Coat, that one's hit over to the shortstop. Should be a pretty easy ball to get. <laughs> Sorry about the cough there, folks. 6-3 on the ground out. And we'll head to the bottom of the sixth inning with the Rebels coming up to bat. You're watching PNTV. No runs for Cipolo. No hits. Nothing left on. We head to the bottom of six. See if Weller returns to the mound. <laughs> Early softball games on tap today for the Oklahoma Sooners. Tierra Jennings launches a two RBI home run in the bottom of the first, put the Sooners up 2 0. Kelly Maxwell continues mastery on the mound. And then in the second, Sidney Sanders crushes another two RBI home run for the Sooners. And OU is up 4 0 on Kansas in a top 20 matchup between now. Soon to be former Big 12 foes, but it is the last Big 12 tournament coming up for the Lady Sooners. <laughs> All right, so both pitchers have a similar trajectory here. So it is a five-inning game for both pitching starters for Silo and Raw, our correction for Tupelo. Coach Weller does make the call. I think that's in large part to save Weller for Saturday's game. The only negative in doing it this particular way, the unfortunate part is, is that if you lose today, you can do no better than fifth. So we may end up having a marquee matchup in a fifth place game. Already a couple of blue bloods that are slotted that way. Should this game hold true to form, you'd have Tupelo in a potential pairing for a fifth place game. You have Roth still alive for a potential fifth place game. And so rips it out to center field. It's going to run under it pretty easily. It'll be a fly out to center. One down. Sooners then get an extra run in the second inning. So it's now 5-0 over Kansas.
All right, bottom of the six now underway. And she had call for the Rebels here. Outside corner high looked a little bit off to me, but it is called strike. Pulls back, fires again. This one low in the dirt. So instead of having a potential strikeout, one, two on the pitch count. And high and outside. Two, two. K time. Well, that one had some heat on it, so two down now for the Rebels here in the bottom of the sixth. Tigers will need a big top seventh if they want to stave off this final score. Rebels really just kind of clinging to a shallow lead. However, it's effective game thus far for the Rebels. This one is deep out to left field. I think it's going to clear the wall, folks. And it is a solo home run for the Silo Rebels. As it goes flying over left field, crossing the Ameristate Bank side. And there you are. 3-0 lead for the Silo Rebels. You can't defend that. So we've had two home runs on the day. Wister got a two RBI blast. And it went over left field wall, virtually same exact spots. However, it did not have the height of that one. That one was at least a good four or five feet over the wall. And the tallest portion of the wall save out to right field. Chopper, third baseman knocks it down and it's gonna allow the base runner to advance it. Probably should have let the shortstop snag that when it would have been a better drag, hitting grass, rolling dirt. As is, he extends the body, knocks it down, unable to get a score or a run correction on that. So after being stymied in the fourth and fifth inning, Silo gets back to scoring. So they've had solo runs at the bottom of the second, third, and now the sixth inning. First time. And back again, safe at first. O2 pitch, Tupelo looking to get out of the jam here in the sixth inning. They've given up a solo RBI. It goes over left field wall for the home run. Checks him in again, high and tight at first. Looper out to left field, flies out. So we'll head to the top of the seventh inning. The Tigers will be up to bat. They trail Silo 3-0. Tupelo will need at least three runs, or we will have a final score for the third game of the day. Home run. In the 
been all rebels so far. RBI single, RBI double, and a RBI home run. I'd like to thank our coverage sponsor for today's live stream, video highlights, and plays of the game. Boomworks Fencing and ENS Blackhawk Designs. Right over to the second base, 4-3, ground out, one down. And just like that, Tigers down to their final two outs. Well, looking more and more likely that we will have a pairing tomorrow that will be just, just the way the tournament was drew up. We knew one of the two teams is going to fall on slot. There's no getting around that. Huge blast. Would have been a home run had it not been fouled. However, if then, could have, would have, should have. And gets him. So Tigers now down to their final out. All right. So basically, we're looking at a 12 o'clock game tomorrow for Roth and the loser of Valiant Riot City coming up after this game concludes. And then now we know the two o'clock game will be Allen Tupelo, unless the Tigers can score three runs here with two outs at the bottom of the seventh. And gets it on the mark. There you go, folks. 5-3 ground out to end the game. Thank you for watching PNTV. Final score, Silo 3, Tupelo 0. All right, so we've got two games now set up for tomorrow at 2 p.m. It will be Allen Tupelo. And then in the 6 o'clock game, it will be Rattan versus Silo.